All right, today I uh, thought I'd do a little Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 grinding, and then I'll be going straight into a, uh, a Yaksha overview for Ninja Warriors once again. Now, I've been playing this a lot off-camera. It isn't terribly interesting to watch, but it is pretty addicting to try to get the uh, the rainbow loot, because those can have uh, pretty much any fixes in the game. So right now, I have this character set up with nothing but rainbow ISO 8 drop rate. So she's got almost double. And then everyone else is running team experience. I, I try to max it out at around 90%. Uh, past that point, it requires a ridiculous amount of materials. And Spider-Man, since I only have seven of the, uh, the team ones, he's just running some experience modifiers. So once I finish this, uh, what I'll need to do is I'll need to go through Ultimate and then unlock the rest of these, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this 46 star reward, which won't be that bad, I imagine, now that I have everybody pretty much maxed out. I've seen some people complaining about how this is like breaking the game and stuff. Honestly, the progression system is almost entirely weighted towards the loot <laughs> instead of the levels. The levels really don't do much of anything. The only thing you can really use them for past like level 50 or 60 is to level up your moves and those are usually pretty boring stuff it's pretty much universal for everybody uh level four or rank four is usually uh it increases the stagger damage which on certain moves can be completely pointless and then the level with the rank five basically makes it so that uh you have more super armor or hyper armor whichever one you prefer it's, it's technically kind of like super armor but sometimes you won't stagger at all so it's like hyper armor that, that's really all the levels do for the most part and uh, everybody wants their eight their fourth ISO slot. So I am pretty close to being done. Uh, if I hadn't been busy with Ninja Warriors once again and other non-gaming stuff, I probably would have been done by now. So I've got four of the six trees maxed out. So everyone says this is the worst tree. Uh, there's really not much down here besides res resilience and a little bit of durability. So I'm going for this one last. Uh, this one as the uh, the central node of being able to stun a staggered enemy. Now that sounds really confusing. What it basically means is that it will reset the stun ta the stun timer, so you have even more time to uh, capitalize on damage phase. So that's actually a really good thing to have. And I believe there's some other ones on this tree as well. No, maybe I'm wrong, but anyway, it's still good to stack. So, let's do three runs here and uh, see what happens. Ideally, I would like to get another couple, uh, actually two more team EXP drops, but those are like the hardest thing to find. So, I'm not exactly holding my breath there. I'm definitely curious to see what they'll do to make the end game more interesting. Like the only really interesting stuff is the rainbow drops, and those are completely random. And, like you can have something really good. Like I have one on Wolverine that basically just straight up increases all his damage by 15%. But I think the other thing on there is pretty useless. <laughs> Hopefully they'll either add better loot or they'll allow you to fuse the loot together. So I've been trying to keep like all my potential good rolls or half good rolls just in case they uh, improve things later on. I think Dynasty Warriors 9 was made by the same company, and that very much had better loot drop uh, you know, later on, implemented later on. So I'm assuming the same thing will happen here. I think for the people who don't want to do this grinding, which is completely understandable, it's pretty repetitive. The only part of it that's interesting is, you know, the potential to get a perfect rainbow ISO drop. 
is uh, they're going to be adding new characters, and this new characters will come new uh, new chances to get more alliance enhancement points. So even though it's pretty tight right now, it seems like you have to have almost everybody maxed to uh, max out the tree. Uh, it won't be so bad later on, even as soon as when we get uh, Cyclops and Colossus in about a month, that will add about another 800 points. Eight hundred points is a pretty significant amount of the uh, of the one tree. I really think this game just has a really bad ending because it doesn't really seem like it should be dropping frames that much. The particle effects are not that crazy in this game. There's definitely games on the Switch that have more going on that at least manage to maintain thirty FPS most of the time. But it's not the first time Koei has had a poorly optimized game, so it's not entirely surprising. I knew what I was getting into when I uh, I played the demo last month, uh, back when they had it at Best Buy. I think it's definitely improved from then. Uh, I remember it tanking quite a bit, even in like situations. The, the demo didn't really have a lot of the particle effects heavy characters. And uh, the performance definitely felt considerably worse. I'm not sure if this game is actually using boost mode or not. That's actually a possibility that uh, they could implement later on, especially since this is published by Nintendo. I can't see why they wouldn't let them do that. Because doing this in portable mode, it's running at like 3 FPS almost the entire time. It wasn't for the fact that your damage was increased so much and everybody is doing uh, synergy attacks pretty much non-stop. It'd probably be a pretty high chance of dying because of the frame rate. I don't think I've got much this run so far. Mostly just alliance enhancement points. This game's actually, the progression in this is actually a lot like Dynasty Warriors 9. The level really doesn't matter much at all. There's no skill cheat or anything. Basically, at level 20, you have your full moveset. And pretty much just add generic bonuses to everything past that point. I'm pretty sure they're going to add more difficult content later on. They'll probably add like a free rip or something. So the level cap is 100, and the hardest content here has a recommended level of 80. And given how the uh, the ranking system, the leveling system works in this game, you generally need to be like five levels higher than what it says. So when you consider there's almost 20 levels of extra content that the game doesn't really warrant. I can see them adding another uh, Infinity Rift, maybe with like level 100 content. Maybe that's where they're going to tie the more interesting loot. I would hope so. Alright, so let's do two more. That wasn't particularly fruitful from what I saw anyway over on the side. I haven't actually checked the inventory yet, but I didn't see anything too interesting. Not that many rainbow drops. Ah, oh, there's one. That might be something good. As much as I would like this to be on a more powerful platform, it definitely is a great game to have on the Switch and you have you know, drop in, drop out, local co-op and online co-op, and you have the ability to play in uh, portable mode pretty much wherever you go. I just think the grinding aspect of the game needs to be more interesting, meaning there needs to be more interesting loot, because right now this is really all I have left to do in the game. I could finish ultimate mode, but there's not really much of an incentive to besides just finishing the rift, which I'm probably going to do for finishing touches maybe sometime this week. I'll probably just speed run through it on stream or something. Kind of reminds me of Bayonetta 2, like you finish the hardest difficulty on that game and it basically is just a dead end. It's like nothing, nothing unlocked, you just get booted back to the title screen, there's no real incentive to go through it. 
Luckily, this game, once you start building your characters properly, it's not really an issue to uh, get through the hardest difficulty. It's not anywhere near as poorly designed as that game's hardest difficulty was, but still... You know, you go through the hardest difficulty, you expect there to be some kind of material incentive to do so. And this game is definitely lacking that so far. Oh, there's a double A. Nice. Like, I remember Dynasty Warriors 9 was a lot like this game before they added the Lord Gems. No, the loot that was in the game was very boring. It didn't really allow for much customization. And it was far too random. Now, Dynasty Warriors 9 never really got out of the far too random part. They never really allowed you to just straight up choose or fuse what you wanted on your Lord Gems. But just having... The random loot definitely helps. But this game also has a similar problem of just the loot and the affixes that can spawn on said loot are very uninteresting. But apparently like Marvel wants to use this as like an advertising uh, vehicle for a pretty long period of time. I mean, obviously from a business standpoint it's better to add content to an existing game like this which can't possibly have costed as much money as something like, uh, you know, the Spider-Man PS4 game. <laughs> and that game can obviously really only have Spider-Man content. This could pretty much encompass all of their properties. So I assume that means we'll be getting consistent long-term support, not just characters, but content and, you know, more gear and things like that. So I don't particularly mind getting everyone to level 100. If anything, it just means I could have more fun doing uh, subsequent playthroughs later on. I'm not really at the point where I want to do that just yet, so we'll have to see how the updates go. Alright, let's do one more. Some people are suggesting actually using the experience cubes maybe around when they're like level 97 to 98 because that's when things get pretty grindy even when you have a bunch of uh, team experience modifiers equipped. So I'll probably do that after this, try to get a couple more points. It would be nice to have everything maxed out before they start dropping updates and things like that. At least in my opinion. Got a couple double A rainbows. It's always a good. <laughs> if you wish the Switch had a custom soundtrack, because man, this game has. It's like. Marvel Infinite soundtrack. It's just so boring and generic. Sounds like, you know, something you'd hear in like a summer movie, a summer blockbuster movie. <laughs> I didn't mind the graphics much of uh, Marvel Infinite. 
I really love the gameplay, but man, the music was such a disappointment. Yeah, one of the things that was most iconic about Marvel vs. games before, besides the graphics and the characters and the gameplay, was the music, at least in my opinion. And I'm pretty sure Marvel uh, forces them to do that, just have that generic summer movie music, even though it doesn't seem like anybody likes it. A lot of people have been complaining about the music in this game, and I, I imagine a lot of them did not play Marvel Infinite, which had the exact same problem of just stuff that drones on, you can't really remember or hear. They've gained about 25 levels so far. <laughs> so if all of them have gained 25 levels, that's about 200-200 points roughly. We'll find out after this. join in. All right, hopefully I got some good drops out of that, and I'm kind of skeptical skeptical because of just how random the rainbow drops are, but let's find out. Yeah, I did get about 300 points for that, so I was right on the dot. Okay, so let's see if this rumor that uh, only unlocking these actually gives you the bonus. Curious. Uh, I probably would need to do this a couple more times, so that will be saved for off camera. Let's go ahead and check the loot. Didn't get any more uh, the space experience. Modifiers may have gotten some team ones. Now, ah, this one's pretty junk. Well, that one's actually not bad. That's just a straight stat buff. When I get the, the four slot, uh, equipping things that aren't quite optimal like that will definitely be a little bit more feasible. Yeah, this one's pretty bad. This one's actually not terrible. I'm going to go ahead and keep that one. This one's nothing special, neither is this one. Raises ability damage by 17.2%. That's always pretty much just a flat damage buff. And this one doesn't have any, uh, any HP catches or anything like that, so that's actually a pretty good one too. Base mastery and extreme meter ups, not bad. Uh, that one could be better. Health and piercing attacks is pretty good for characters like uh, Black Panther and Wolverine. On anybody else, probably not that great. All right, that's a trash one. Decent. Trash. That's another bad one. <laughs> a lot of uh, subpar to bad ones here.
This one actually might not be that bad, but it decreases your HP damage. If that was just a straight damage modifier one, with those ones are a lot harder to find, then maybe that would be good. Okay, so I should go ahead and warn people just how much of a pain it is to uh, get rid of all the crap drops. The inventory system in this is actually quite nice in most ways. Like, you could choose the rank of the item, which color, whether people have it equipped, whether you have it preserved, what rank it is, and things like that. And you can narrow things down a lot, but the problem is that you can't get rid of this stuff, uh, like, quickly. So if you want to just trash all the bad loot, you can't do that. You have to do it 10 at a time. So you can imagine how much time you spend doing this uh, if, you're, if you're constantly trying to chase the best loot like I am. And once you get past 950, it basically boots you back to the screen and forces you to do this. So I hope this is something that will be improved later on. Yeah, I have so much crap in here, I can't even get rid of it. And one of the other problems is a lot of times you actually want to keep the B bee, the bee drops because uh, those will be used significantly for just uh, upgrading your other stuff. However, it's generally a pretty safe bet to get rid of the yellow stuff because those are mostly defense oriented and damage is definitely king in this game. So you could probably trash a bunch of these. Basically anything under... Anything under... Uh, or over... Actually, I'm getting so confused by doing this. Anything around 900 is when you want to start doing this because it's going to boot you back and just completely kill your flow. All other B drops are definitely worth keeping because you'll need those for your good drops later on, but the yellow stuff, it's pretty safe to say that you can just get rid of it. Eventually you will get good things in each category or the respective color where you'll be able to uh, fuse them in and clear out your inventory that way. But yellow is pretty much just trash, so that's basically the gist of it. So let's go ahead and see how many experience cubes I got before I sign off. Got a decent amount here, so I think I can get a couple characters to uh, 100. You can definitely see I've been doing this a lot. It basically takes no effort at all. Now anybody you still have at a low level is definitely recommended to do this on because they'll this just get, uh, get more levels faster. And you don't get more alliance enhancement points depending on what level the characters are. So anybody you have low level, you should definitely do this Where with first because I? that will just get you the points that much faster. And you can worry about everyone else later on. Alright, so let's go ahead and max out Iron Man, and then uh, sub someone else in, then I'll probably continue this off-camera. And then once I get the, uh, the other 22 stars required for those 50 ultimate cubes, that should be a pretty significant boost as well. There we go. Level up. Cool. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and sign off there. Uh, I'll probably do most of this off camera. I might do a grinding stream if I'm really bored or something, but everyone's basically just waiting for the uh, the DLC and the patches at this point. I definitely really enjoyed this game. It's got a lot of flaws, but, you know, I did play Dynasty Warriors 9. That game launched in a far worse state than this did. This game has a lot of annoying things about it and things like that, but it's definitely nothing that can't be fixed with patches. This is probably going to get just as much, if not more, long-term long -term support than uh, DW9 did. So I'm definitely excited for that. Anyway, see you guys tomorrow. Peace.